Icon with change. A new one venturi into the universe of large numbers faces changes, challenges like those of long range space missions. As we seek to explore further and further from our home planet, we need to know what's out there and how to cross vast distances quickly on a human time scale for this possible future. The planets and others and other objects in the solar system are our main goals, but beyond them lie the, lie the many wonders of interstellar and the and the extragalactic space. Already some of our spacecraft have left the solar system and are heading towards the stars. Voyager, Voyager, 1, Voyager 1 and 2 launched in 1977, have passed through near the boundary of the sun's magnetic influence, the heliopause, and are now officially in interstellar space, but are still standing back big scientific data and, with any luck, will continue to do so for, to do so for a few more years yet. After that, they'll fall silent and we'll hear no more from them as they drift silently past some of the nearer stars before plunging deeper into the great voids of Milky Way. Pioneers 10 and 11, Pioneers 10 and 11 launched early, early, earlier than the Voyagers but traveling more slowly are also on exist trajectories from the solar system. However, their power sources are already exhausted so that we have no way of communicating with them. Calculations by a team of researchers published in 20, 2019 suggest that none of these spacecraft space graph are likely to any really close encounters with other star systems over the next million years or so. The nearest thing out to a stellar flyby may be when Pioneer 10 comes with the three characters of the year of the orange dwarf star ship 1177995 in the constellation Cassiopeia about 90,000 uh, 90, years from now. It's hard to get excited about a remote stellar flyby and inert spacecraft that won't happen from another 3,000 generations. To make interstellar space travel meaningful and interest, we need to we need to develop methods of propulsion that will get us or our robot props to other stars in a matter of decades, not tens of thousands of years. In the same way. When we are dealing with the space of large numbers, we can rely on traditional and hopelessly pedestrian means of traveling down the number line of tourist targets such as Graham's number or whatever may lie still further away. Graham's number is like an interesting but distant star. We know it's out there and that, given enough time, we could reach it one baby step at a time in the mathematical case, simply by counting 1, 2, 3, and so on, by coming up one by one the many level of fantastically tall power tower. But such conventional methods are in particular for high speed numerical travel, and the more than chemical rockets are up to the task of hopping between stars in the galaxy, nuts up around or the equivalent in each operator of square bracket notation give us a form of propul propulsion for raising down the number line much faster than anything we learn about it about in school just an, just a handful of apparatus are needed to represent numbers so last that they that fill the observable universe and more if written out in full yet when confronted with Graham's number, even up our propulsion turns out to be pretty fully inadequate. We're forced to use dots to stand to stand for rows of of apparatus so fantastically long that they couldn't be contained. However, we written with the physical confines of space as we know it. 
so where do we go from here what's the next great leap in numerical propulsion technology it's worth recording that apparatus were Donald Nuts a way of showing hyper operators and hyper operators in turn extend the hierarchy of operators with which we've been familiar since childhood cessation better known as counting up the, counting up by one addition multiplication and exponentiation apart from succession which is a unary operation because it acts just a single per run that number what that number that, that the number that one is being added to all the paper operators are binary of the addict for instance for instance a plus b and a to the b are both binary operations because they act on because they act on two operands a and b the hyper operator sequence is also recursive because each operator can be defined and represented in terms of the repeated action of the previous operator in the sequence to develop a propulsion system that will take us further and faster in space than even before we have to come up with an entirely new technology of make serious improvements of what's already available what lead in mathematical engineering could help could help us at first the greatest speed towards far flung corners of the numerical cosmos in 1996 British mathematicians John Conway and Richard Guy in their book, book in their book of numbers explained a new way of traveling down the number line by a method that two based on two based on a was enormously most more was enormously more powerful like Donald Nutt, Conway and Guy who bought who bought died in 2020 were eminent professional mathematicians who also truly enjoyed the recreational aspects of the subject and were quite happy to post links between the academic and the more powerful not surprisingly this brought them into close contact with Amer American master of recreational math writing Martin Gardner who then brought who then brought guess, the discoveries to a worldwide audience. John Houghton Conway was born in Liverpool 1937 and showed an early ap aptitude of formats, reciting powers of two when he was just four years old. By the age of 11, he knew exactly what he wanted to do when he got older, study mathematics at Cambridge and go on to become a full-time academic mathematician. At school, he was painfully introverted, but at university managed to transform himself into such an extrovert for the rest of life. That a 2011 article on him in The Guardian by Sjoban Roberts was titled John Houghton Conway, the world's more charismatic mathematician. He was known to be witty, boisterous, polymatic and endless creative. Sigmund Michael Atiyah described him as the most magical mathematician in the world. Having earned his doctorate at Cambridge in 1964, Conway stayed on as member Conway stayed on as a member of the faculty there until in 1986. He moved to Princeton, New Jersey to become John von Neumann Professor of Applied and Computational Mathematics. He had the professorship, later becoming emeritus, until his death in April 2020, age 82, of complications of COVID-19. It's hard to draw a line between Conway's achievements in mainstream mathematical research and the many fascinating discoveries and inventions he made the in, he made the at uh, the fringe of the subject. On the recreational front, he was probably best known for his game of life. Introduced to, to the world at last through one of Gardner's scientific American columns in 1970. But life is, is far more than just a pastime involving contests on a board marked with squares. It's one of the earliest successful examples of what's known as a cellular automaton 
a way of modeling the evolution of a system that can be represented using a regular grid of cells. We'll have more to say about, in, about it in chapter 6, chapter 8. In the same year that the game of life became the thinking person's computer creation of choice, Conway also provided the first description of such cell numbers. This new fast number system, which, as we said earlier, Donald not explain in the gist of a fictional tale of a fictional tale, fictional tale, stem only enough from Conway's analysis of, of end game situations in the ancient board of game in the ancient board game of Go. Conway made important contributions to many areas of maths, including theories of groups of groups, knots, and games, geometry, algebra and topology. She co-authored several books with fellow number theories and recreational mathematician Richard Guy, who remained active in his active in his academic fields as well as environmentalism and mountain hiking until up his death just a month or so before Conway's at the at the age of one hundred three. One hundred Entry. In one of the books he, he then brought together, Conway unfed a new, ingenious way of representing large numbers called chain row notation. In the last chapter, we used a progress to get Graham's number, G64. But long before we reached our goal, it, we reached our goal, it was obvious that Nas notation wasn't really up to the ax, to the tax. It was an adequate for the job of secure specific the presenter we fitted with the same kind of rockets that sent humans to the moon. At first sight, Conway system for representing large numbers, which uses right pointing across, doesn't seem much doesn't seem much of an improvement, if any, over up across. Like what of not change. A conway, a conway chain such as consists of positive integers separated by arrows, also by also like up arrows. The sole purpose of chain chain, chain, chain arrows is to provide a compact means of representing extraordinary large numbers. A chain a chain of length one, so not really a chain at all. It's just a positive whole number, and a chain of a, and a chain of two numbers is equivalent to one upper of exponentiation. A chain of three numbers is equivalent to a hyperoperation of multiple upper rows. In other words, a raise to a power to a power tower of b is that is c high. You may be. You may be thinking that at this point that Conway's and Nuts systems are in, the, in fact identical except that they are rest point in different, in different direction, but the resemblance is superficial. The immense difference between the two becomes apparent when, he, when we start to look at chains that are four or more in length, for instance. You can figure out that you can figure out what any number written in chain row in chain row form is by using just a few simple rules, a couple of which we've already met. There are various ways of writing these rules, all of which amount to the same thing, and we'll just choose a set that's easily and easy to apply. Rule one is a trivial statement that if a chain A is only element long. That is, th then it's just a number. Then it's just the number a. Rule two is that a chain of length two is equivalent to a single upper row of, of single upper row to, uh, of exponentiation. Rule three says that if a chain ends in one, you you can just you can just drop the one because it's not just because it's not doing anything for example exactly in the same way rule 4 says that if the second last number is 1 
you can chop off the chain at the point so that for instance rule 5 is what give is what gives converse chains arose the, the phenomenal power and the one that takes a bit to get your head around you we can write it like this when x is the chain up as far as the last two numbers and a and b are the last two numbers in plain english this means we, dec we decrease the last number by one and fit the original chain the second last number decreased by one into the second last number in other words we replace the b in the original chain with by minus one and substitute the a in the original chain with another copy of the original chain except that the a in this copy is replaced by a minus one then we just repeat the process over and over again also evaluating what's inside the inner boss set of parentheses before moving on the rest of the chain here's a summary of this of the five rules one a chain a of the, the a chain a of length one is just a number a a uh, is the same as is the same as exponentiation a to the b or single upper row x to a x where x is a sub chain or part of a chain in this case x is, is all x is all of the chain except for the last element let's now look at a few simple examples of how these rules work together starting with the three number chain apply rule to five x equals three a equals three and b equals two we get rule three let us drop the one at the end so this become now let's focus on what inside the parenthesis and apply rule 5 to it drop the one at the end and the chain becomes rule 4 allows the inside the parenthesis to be truncated to 3 on its own so we're left with then inside the remaining parenthesis by parenthesis is by rule 3 by rule 2 just 3 cube of 27 so the whole chain boils down to 3 to the 27 or this agrees with what we said earlier about the interpretation of a three number chain in converse not notation namely that it's the same as hyperoperation the last number in the chain giving the number of upper rows in other words the size of numbers represented in chain a row from the from depends greatly on both on both the length of the chain and the size of individual elements. The four number chain, for instance, reduces according to rule five after the first step two, which then becomes this this equivalent as we know with a with eight upper rows. It's a colossal number by any number of standards, but not but not in the same leaks as say Graham's number. Consider to the chain rule five tells us this the same as the next step is to begin to evaluate what what's inside the parenthesis, which again involves applying rule, rule five. Now we have nested the now we have the nested parenthesis we have to focus on figuring out the inner one before doing anything else by rule 4 the chain in the inner parenthesis can be chopped off at 1 leaving us with the in inner parenthesis is 5 to the 4 is equals 627 to 25 so now we have and already 
we can sense that there's about to be a major eruption because of the sudden appearance of that 625 in the middle of the chain applying rule 5 to the contest of the remaining parentheses and suddenly regarding the interstellar chain agro power hyperdrive to some number that the some some number that before we had no means to, to reach the next step in the expansion gives the indexation then reduces to after hundreds more iterations the third element in the innermost set of parentheses currently 623 will finally shrunk down to one and will be able to start on the next level will which which will again contain the chain by the time by this time however the overall chain will be nearly 2,000 elements long and about to go much longer still. Now we can start working outwards, but at each step, but at each step, the field we get becomes the number of upper rows in the next, just as the expense of Graham's number. Finally, once all the inner parentheses are resolved, the result we end up with, we end up with it. Then the third element of another chain ending with two this means we have to repeat the same process of expansion now the number of steps we take each step becoming the becoming the uh, the number of the number of upper loss in the next is equal to this chain number we already form using this process the chain row is in fact much larger than graham's number which lies be which lies between you might think at first glance that it's bigger than because 64 is by far the largest single the, the largest single element in either chain but having a 3 at the end of chain rather than a 2 is the first the more dominant factor in, determi in determining how in det determining how many steps it takes to write the chain out in full. Makes Graham's number look insignificant, yet we can easily name a bigger chain. How about written in this way? It's a com it's as compact in terms of the space it takes up on the page as 30 plus 35 uh, as 35 plus 269 plus 80, 81 plus 95 plus 54 plus 428 which we can easily equate to be a mere 662 962 there's nothing about the appearance of a number in chain below form the gifts and the inkling whatsoever of the size of the monster like curl with up within it. But as soon as we start to unpack it, realization dawns about what we're dealing with. Having glimpsed the tax on unraveling a chain, even as simple looking as it might seem that evaluating a longer chain involving much larger elements would be impossible and indeed it's impossible practically speaking the whole point of chain ergo notation is that it provides a, a means of representing numbers so huge that they can be written in ordinary form the universe isn't big enough to hold them furthermore it's very easy to represent and to be sent a number in chain ergo form that's so large it, it couldn't be written in full even using upper rows because it would require more upper rows than the than, than the upring volumes in the observable universe. In fact, in all it's also easy and quick to come up with a conway chain describing a number so big that even the number of upper rows needed to represent it couldn't be written down. No not if, if we bring volume we used to hold a digit of it. Yet each and every Conway chain does represent a specific finite number, however large and 
if time, space, matter, and energy were limiting factors, the chain could eventually be evaluated and reduced to a single number. This guaranteed reducibility comes from the clever way in which the rule governing chain error rotation were devised. When the last number of the next of the next or the next last to or the next to last number in the chain reduced to, to one, as a result will the chain can be truncated at the, at the point and the process continued until all the elements have been weighted down to the last one standing the final result. The ability of a very uh, of a very simple set of rules to give rise to such a powerful system for naming gigantic numbers parallels the, sim the similar simplicity of the game of life. The game of life, another of Conway's inventions. In life, in life, the rules, the rules are so very, are so very elementary that I can follow them. Yet it can lead to the, the patterns of astonishing diversity and complexity in change of row notation or the potential for concealing superscale numbers behind the value of simplicity is contained in what we've called in we've called rule five. As in the case of the hyperoperator sequences sequence, the key for the key force at work the key force at work in Conway system is recursion the repeated application of a group on form a formula to its own results. In a broader sense, we can see recursion at work in the everyday world when, for instance, we can stand we stand between two parallel mirrors. Our image in one mirror appears in the image of the other, whose images whose image in turn becomes part of the image in the first and so on, a well known toy. The Russian the Russian doll is recursive in that the most the small doll lies inside a large no, a larger no, one which which in turn is concealed within a still larger one. We use recursion in maths right from the start. As young children, when we learn counting, in formal terms, counting is just the repeat application of the success of, of the success of function, the action of which is to add one to the last result. Repeated counting is addition. Repeat addition is multiplication. Re repeated multiplication is exponentiation, and so on. So that each step up to the hyperoperator sequence mark a new level of recursive processing. Chain arose harness even more recursive power to express numbers that realistic, 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 realistically are beyond the reach up the reach of arose of any of the other sims for representing or hyperoperators. But converse arose but converse arose themselves a little more than that of playing full game. A trick devised by skillful mathematicians to show us what amazing things recursion can do in the realm of large numbers. Now it's time to move beyond the popular big number themes, such as up a rose and chain a rose. A journey into some deep and serious mathematics awaits, awaits us on the way to the biggest number in the world, a journey that began almost a century ago.